Dear students, I am Shuk Kumar Eslate, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Shulingshya College of Pharmacy, Almala. Today we will learn Coronopharmacology. Learning outcomes upon the completion of this video, students should able to describe the biological rhythm and biological clock, describe the regulation of biological clock. and identify the importance of biological clock in chronopharmacotherapy in this video tutorial we learn definition types of rhythm definition ex- example and significance of circadian rhythm or biological cycle definition importance and application of chronotherapy or chronotherapeutic and also we can refer the references definition of cycle cycles cycles are nothing but series of biological events they are occurs in the body example cardiac cycle so cardiac cycle consists of mainly two events that is a atrial systole and ventricular systole and as well as arterial diastole and ventricular diastole so these events are grouped together so those are known as the cycle so dear students our body will be having more than 100 cycles second definition rhythms series of events so they occurs according to the times or schedule such cycles are known as a rhythms types of rhythm so rhythms are mainly classified into three types ultradian rhythm if cycle less than 20 hours such cycles are known as the ultradian rhythms example neuron fire so neuron can take only the micro millisecond to fire the action potential so were series of events are involved the entry of sodium entry of calcium then exist of sodium then entry of potassium so like that events time to time they occurs or according to schedule they occur such events are known as the ultradian second circadians if the cycles less than 24 hours such cycles are known as the circadian rhythms example is a sleep awake cycle it is also consist of rme and non rme rm means rapid eye ball movements and nrm means non rapid eye ball movement then third one is a infradians if the cycles equal to or more than 28 days such cycles are known as the infradian rhythms example is a menstrual cycles so other definitions related to the chronopharmacology are biological rhythm so biological rhythms are the cyclic activities that are characteristics of human life these behavior or developments occur a part of life then second one chronobiology a formal study of biological temporal rhythms such as daily weekly seasonal and annual rhythms are called chronobiology then last one circadian rhythms circadian rhythms comes from the latin word circa means around and dima means day the circadian rhythm is also known as a biological clock it is necessary for to regulate the sleep awakening cycle hormonal secretion and regulations of blood vessel the sorry blood pressure and as well as the regulations of the metabolism 
if any abnormality is related to this irregularity that means so they can cause the various disorders like obesity hypertension diabetes bipolar disorder and insomnia now we learn regarding the importance of circadian rhythm the first one it determines the sleeping and feeding patterns circadian rhythms is also regulate the sleep cycles so with the help of the melatonin if any problem in the sleep cycle or we are awakening in the night time then circadian rhythms are altered so due to that we are suffering from various kind of the mental disorders or cns disorders then second importance of circadian rhythm is to regulate brain activity and cell generation this is an advantages will helpful for prevention and treatment of the genetic disorders then third importance it play important role in the secretion of endocrine hormones production because of this advantage proper and correct circadian rhythm will helpful for prevention of the various various metabolic disorder including diabetes mellitus then fourth one it also regulate the other biological activities then we learn biological clock so biological clock it is one of the series of events they are occurs according to the time and your each and every organ of the body they having their own rhythms according to that time only so they are involved in the regulations of the various functions in the body so time between 1 to 3 pm the small intestine should be active it can perform the functions like absorption of the nutrition separation of the waste to large intestines and bladders so it is actually it is also known as a nap time if you are getting one small nap around less than 20 minute it can accelerate the beneficial functions of the small intestines then time between 3 pm to 5 pm this time is reserved for the bladders and here bladder can perform the functions like stores of liquid waste and release body heat and it is the actually it is a well time for work study and take a cup of tea and 5 to 7 pm so here the kidney can work and it regulates the functions like filtrations stores of nutrition and is this time is also considered as the exercise time super time and it is also ideal time to take the dinner because here the digestive activities are present after 7 o'clock the jt motility is decreases so that it can alter the or it can create the problem in the digestion so that's why so that is 7 pm before 7 pm it is the right time to take a dinner then 7 pm to 9 pm it is the period of pericardium so during this period the pericardium can removes the pathogens around the heart so here dear students you should be socialize and have a fun between 7 pm to 9 pm because so when you are involved in the socializations or involved in the fun and enjoying so on that time the functions of the heart was less because the demand of tissue or organ regarding oxygen so that can be decreases so do that the functions of the heart can be decreases it can allow the pericardium to perform the cleaning process around the heart then between 9 pm to 11 pm it is known as the 
ट्रिपल वार्मर सो ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड सो इट इज एक्चुअली कंसिडर एज अ रेस्ट टाइम सो हियर द इम्यून सिस्टम इज अ स्ट्रांग इट कैन बेटर वर्क सो दैट्स वाई डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू शुड बी चिल आउट आर रिलैक्स और इफ योर स्टूडेंट्स आर टॉप यू कैन इन्वॉल्व इन द रीड then between time 11 to 1 am it is the period of the gall bladders so here the gall bladder performs the release of bile and this bile is helpful for the digestion of the fat it means so whatever we are eat the fat so those fat only digested 11 pm to 1 am then also in the bone rbm so they are produces the red blood cells so that's why students here you can take the sleep and allow to the body to generate the new blood cells between 11 pm to 1 am then the time 1 am to 3 am it is the time for liver so here the liver is involved in the detoxifications and synthesis of the various nutritions hormones enzymes and as well as the involved in the metabolisms and uh, uh, destructions of the productions of the blood cells or destructions of the blood cells so that's why so this period is considered as the deep resting and dreaming then period 9 am to 5 am it is considered for the lung time so here the lung is also involved in the detoxifications and it is in which the, there is a deep sleep and the blood pressure is a lower so due to that you can go for the deep sleep if any alteration in the lung period and liver period the detoxification process in the body can be abolished so due to that we are suffering from the various chronic disorders then period 5 am to 7 am it is the period for the large intestine so large intestine it is one of the most important organ of the git it is involved in removal of the waste material from the our body after producing the daily activity so that can occurs in the period between 5 am to 7 am so like that here so large intestines involved in the absorption of water some nutritions and also to eliminate the solid waste material so dear students here you can wake up take a drink or uh, drink a water so i have requested to you all at least you should be take the 2 to 4 glass if it is possible you can take the light warm water so that light warm it can enhance the git motility and helpful for the removal of the waste material from the git then between 7 to 9 am it is the period of the stomach so mox is involved in the digestions and as well as the absorption so that's why so in the period 7 am to 9 am you can take the breakfast or you can eat and also you can mainly prefer that eating of the fruits uh, low calorie carbohydrates healthy fat and some multivitamin you can add to your food so that can helpful for the development and growth of the body then time between 9 am to 11 11 am is the period of the spleen and spleen is the most important organs involved in the destructions of the blood cells or productions of the blood cells so now we can see what can spleen can perform so spleen convert foods into blood and involved in the generation of the energy so dear student you should be work in 9 am to 11 am as well as you be active so activity can influence on the productions of the blood and energy so that energy that can keep to you throughout the day as a active then the time between 11 11 am to 1 pm it is the time for heart so here the heart is more active cardiovascular functions are also the more active so due to that slight the blood pressure and heart rate is increases so it is the right time for eat the lunch and socialize so like that the cycles will be the continue for every days so dear student 
the best time for our body is a detoxing period so that can occurs in the lung time and liver time as well as the in the largest time and recovery time that is the once again that is sleep time it is helpful for the generations of the body development repairing process so that's all our occurs a recovery period so that's why you should be have the ideal time go to the bed and away from the bed in the early morning so then only your biological clock should be normal and you are free from the various kind of the disorders so dear students now we can learn regarding the regulations of the biological clock so light dark light dark period can stimulate the eye then when i are close then this clock was begin so retina send impulses to the hypothalamus by retinothalamic tract so thalamus it can contain in the special type of the cells that is known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus it is involved in the regulations of the biological clock it means the hypothalamus of the brain it is involved in the regulations of sudden rhythm or a biological clock so then the this nucleus it can send the information to the that is a nodule neuron with the help of the supracervical ganglia then nodule neurons so they involved in the secretions of the nodule then nodule enters in the pineal gland so where it can acts on the nor adrenaline receptor and involved in the formations of the cyclic mp and this cyclic mp convert tryptophan into melatonin then the melatonin secrete the blood vessels and from the blood vessels it can enter in the different parts and then enter into the different organs from here it can have the following functions like prooterotropic effects that is the antioxidant it can also show the anti inflammatory activity or regulate the anti hypertension and as well as anti thrombotic and anti lipemic so like that our biological clock it can protect the our body so here the main key factor for regulation of the biological clock is a one is a melatonin and another is a suprachiasmatic nucleus so both two they are regulate the our biological clock and including that is the closing of the eye so dear student in the day times our eye was open so that is known as the light period so do on that time the inhibitory impulses they are reaches to the eye so on that time so this retino hypothalamic tract once again it is involved to send the information to the suprachiasmatic nucleus in this time the suprachiasmatic it do not activate the supra cervical ganglia instead of that this it can activate the neural and humoral outflows so due to that the cns can be activated so due to activations of cns the ans activity can be occurs so like that the biological clock it can depending upon the closing and opening of the our eye or dark and day Thank you dear students